Hi, today we want to talk about uh, 6.3 of uh, Savage Book C++ Edition 10. So I'm going to share my screen. And uh, the 6.3 is about character IO. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I am going to turn on this one. OK, so. We're talking about character IO. We, we talked about it, some of you guys were asking about how do we read uh, numbers uh, to be sure that the user didn't put any character or vice versa. If the user is supposed to put a character and they put a, a number, how do we verify it? How do we check it? So we're gonna go into this uh, character IO. Uh, so the whole idea of the character I.O. we're going to be reading and writing uh, ca characters. So to talk more about that, if we have a number, let's say number 10, and we are going to read it as a character, we're going to read character 1 and character 0. There is a difference between character 1 and number 1. So we're going to be looking at that. So if we're reading it as a character and we are writing it as a character, we're going to read one zero and we're going to write one zero. So that is not going to affect it that much. We are not going to have too much problem. But if we want to do some addition, subtraction, arithmetic with it, then we have a problem because one zero as character are not numbers. So we cannot add anything to it. So if I have a total or a sum and I want to add this 10 to it, it's not going to work because it's not a number 10. So we're going a little more into that. Let me put this one somewhere. Okay. So we are uh, reading as a character. Uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, if I read it as a character, I'm going to read just one character. And if I read it as a number, I'm going to read the whole 10 as a number. So reading one character is going to give me one as a character. Reading the whole thing as a number is going to give me 10 as a number 10. Now I can add it to my total. So. There is a conversion that's going to be automatically happen between characters and numbers. C++ likes numbers, so it saves even the character as a number. So converting them uh, from one to the other one is automatic. It does happen. And remember, we talked about this before, that if a smaller data top goes to the bigger one, there is no uh, loss of data, so it's going to happen, just like we talked before. If I have a small cup of coffee, I put it in a bigger cup, uh, nothing is going to spill. But if I have a bigger cup and I want to put it in a smaller cup, then we're going to have some leftover that we have to figure out how to handle it. So uh, putting a integer to a character, because integer is bigger, we can potentially have some problem. Uh, but putting a character into the integer, we generally not going to have any problems. Now, uh, to talk about that, if I take a character and I put it in a number, it's going to take its ASCII code and it's going to put it in the number. So one is 49, A is 67. Let's take a look at a ASCII table. You have this in your appendix in the end of your book. And I have a link, I put it in here, the welcome for this week. So in here, we have 127 uh, character. That's taking one byte, which is eight bits, and using seven of them. We use to use a seven character. And the last one is for checking to see if it's correct or not. So the first 31, which are in this area, 
these are uh, the ones that we don't see them. So if you print it or you look at it, we, have, we generally cannot see. So you can see that the um, number uh, 10 is backspace, uh, number 11 is horizontal tab, number 12 is new line fit or new line, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we have escape character over here, we have null character over here, uh, we have bell over here, so we can actually print bell. So when you print that, uh, it's going to it's going to make a noise. Your computer is going to make a noise. Uh, something that you might want to consider uh, as uh, if somebody put a wrong number. When you say wrong, you might want to make a noise a little bit. Uh, so. To, uh, for us to be able to communicate uh, with these characters, we are usually using a backslash as a, a special uh, character. So we're using that, it's called the escape character. That means if I want a bell, that's gonna be backslash seven. If I want uh, uh, la line fit, it should be backslash n and so on and so forth. So looking at crossing here, uh, starting at 65, we will have A, capital A, and going over with 97 is lowercase a. So lowercase a is 97, uppercase a is 65. That's why when you're sorting the stuff in your computer, capital letters comes before lowercase letters. They are smaller. Uh, now, I want to, I want you to pay attention to this section that we have zero to nine as characters. So if I have a zero as a character and I put it into a number, it's going to give me number 48. It does not give me zero. So that's something that, that we need to practice in this uh, chapter and in this section that characters zero to nine are numbers from 48 to 57. So practiced this before in some other assignment, that if I want to get a zero from character zero, I have to deduct 48 from it. Or basically taking any of these character and I deduct 48, which is character zero, then I would get its number. Oh, that's what I want to talk about over here with the ASCII table. Uh, and then going back to our slide. Okay, and getting this one here. So just a little bit more on that, that uh, section, uh, that there is a difference between single character and a string. So a character A, which is number 65, is going to be displayed in this format. So when we have one byte, which has eight bits, in ASCII table, the last one is not used for our work. So it's going to go from here to here, and it's going to be two to the zero, two to the one, two to the three, uh, two, three, and four, and five. So this is going to be one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. So one times 64 plus one is going to give me 65. So that's the way we're going to get 65 for character A. Now, a string A, which denotes with double code, is not only has the 65, it's going to have a, a It's going to have a backslash zero, which is null after it. So that means character A is one byte, what character or a string A is two bytes. So whenever we have a string, it's going to have this backslash zero at the end of it. So we have to differentiate that when we're working with character, it's just going to be a single character, not the double code. That would be a string. That's the difference between a string 
and cap. So let me clear this out and then we go to the next one. So the automatic conversion uh, is uh, something here that if I take uh, A and I put it into a number, that's gonna give me 65. So my number becomes 65. If I take a character and I put 65 in it, it's gonna give me a character A. So practically C++, is saving characters as numbers. It doesn't, so when you print a character, it's gonna go and print A, but actually your storage part is saving it as a 65. So we have some uh, functions over here for character IO that's gonna perform some uh, input and output. Uh, so the one is gonna be get, so when we using the get function, the get function is not like our extraction operator that we were using before. That was, do you remember extraction operator? We, it was a skipping over spaces, new line and tab. Those are called white spaces. But uh, get does not, and get only read one character. It doesn't read anything more than that. Just one character at a time. So white spaces, space, backslash, and tab. So if you're using extraction operator, it's gonna skip over those uh, white spaces. But if you're using get, it does not skip over them. So get does read spaces, it does read tab, it does read your backslash n. So it does not skip over blanks. So how do we use it? We are going to have some I stream. So it's going to be either in scene or in file or in a stream, whatever uh, stream that we have. We're going to put the dot, that means it's going to be a member function, get, and then we're going to put a character over here. So it's going to read one character. So the value of it is going to go there. So it does not skip over anything, it's gonna read every single character. That would be blank spaces. It's gonna be reading backslash N. All of those things gonna be read. So an example, we just look at it. We could use the same thing with the IF stream. So we can say uh, in a stream dot get a symbol to read one character from the file, or we can do it to CE to read one character from the keyboard. Just want to remind you, I have seen some of the assignments that you guys turned it in, that you don't use the fail. So the fail has to come right after you open a, a stream. So you're opening a, a IF stream, you have to check for the fail. You open the OF stream, you have to check for fail right after it. Okay, now let's see what happens when we are using different things. So I have an input A, B, enter C, D. So when I say C in dot get C1, C in dot get C2, C in dot get C3, it's gonna start reading from here. So my first one is gonna be this one. The second one is gonna be this one. The third one, what do you think is going to go? The third one is going to read back a slash n that I have right here. So if I want to uh, write those things, of course, back a slash n is going to go to the next line, but the value of them. I would have C1 as A, C2 as B, and C3 as backslash N, which is right here. Now, if I would use extraction operator and I read C1, C2, C3, this extraction operator is gonna skip over the spaces, wider spaces, including backslash N. So it's gonna read A, it's gonna read B, it's gonna skip over back a slash N or any other spaces, and then it's gonna read C next. So I want you to pay attention to the differences between these two. That's basically the most important part of this 
section. So I want you to stop here, think about some of these questions so we can reflect back on what you have uh, uh, listening to me. And then uh, we can uh, discuss this in a class or if you have uh, something that's not clear, just put it on the DQ so we can talk about it.